This lecture shows you how to estimate the cost of an activity within a project. This lecture is part of the course on project management for information technology. This lecture has been organized by Professor Alimi. It is, in part, based on Chapter 5 of the Project Management for Construction online book. This lecture is also based on a review of literature on activity-based costing as it applies to electronic health records. This lecture has been narrated by Chris Smith. The cost of purchasing something is not the entire cost. The true cost includes other costs and is often a lot more than the purchase cost. Most people are familiar with purchase cost as they are used to paying the price of a commodity they are purchasing. Few people think that the true cost and as a consequence they have a distorted picture of the cost. The cost of an electronic health record has many components. Some of the costs are software licenses cost of developing master patient index, cost of the pharmacy system, cost of drug to drug interaction decision aid, cost of the lab system, cost of the outpatient system, hardware cost, network infrastructure cost, yearly support cost, and finally training cost. Each of these costs is over several years. Furthermore, most costs are priced based on volume of use. Thus, as the computer serves more people, the license fees increase. So in sense, the actual purchase cost depends on the volume of patients and clinicians working with the system. Furthermore, each of these categories has many components of its own. For example, hardware might include servers, printers, backup devices, duplicate operation sites, and so on. No wonder project managers have such a difficult time estimating costs of an EHR. But this is not the entire picture. This is not all of the costs. Many and perhaps more important costs have not been even mentioned. You would imagine that electronic health records would be housed in a building. Clearly the building has a cost whether the IT department rents it or not. There's an opportunity cost associated with the space taken by the IT department. There's a cost of personnel. This includes contractors. IT personnel are found in the IT department as well as within the functional units. Some are on the IT budget, others are on the functional unit's budget. All of this adds to the true cost of the electronic health record. Then there is the cost of operation. Someone has to pay for the electricity that runs the machines. Someone has to clean the floors, air condition, the rooms, and so on. Finally, there is liability insurance, overhead, and financing costs. All of these are costs, and they are not minor costs. The building costs alone might be more expensive than the purchase cost. The personnel cost is typically a very large component of cost of electronic health records. But even these costs don't cover the entire cost of an electronic health record. The costs we have mentioned so far miss a very important cost. The biggest cost any IT system has is its impact on operations. If the electronic health record reduces the efficiency of clinicians by even a small amount, then over time, during many visits, the electronic health record will cost the organization a great deal more than what it took to purchase it or to operate it. Data show that some electronic health records may at first reduce the efficiency of operations by a considerable amount. Thankfully, other data show that over time, efficiency improves. These data suggest that the impact on productivity is not small and should not be ignored. Furthermore, the impact is not simple and may change over time. So in essence, we can think of the cost of an electronic health record in three different ways. First, there's the purchase cost. Then there's the economic or true cost. And finally, is the impact on efficiency of operations. I've been trying to impress on you how the true cost of anything is a lot more than its purchase price. What may surprise some of you is how variable the true cost is. The magnitude of these costs depends on the nature, size, and location of the electronic health record. Obviously, purchase licenses depend on the number of clinicians and patients. But other costs also depend on a host of other factors. Building costs depend on property values. Cost of network structure is different in a rural hospital than in one near an internet node. Some organizations have high administrative costs. This certainly will add to the cost of IT. 
All of this makes the cost to one organization at one point very different than the cost to another. For a project manager, trying to come up with an accurate budget for the implementation of electronic health record system is the cause for all concern. The variability of cost of purchase and operation makes the estimation of the cost of an electronic health record system difficult. This lecture focuses on how project managers can accurately estimate the cost of their project. A project manager has a difficult task when it comes to estimating what the cost of an IT project will be. As we mentioned earlier, they not only have to consider the purchase price, but also the true cost of the technology. The project manager has to discount future costs and keep in mind of the cost of financing a capital project over the years. The project manager has to consider numerous factors that make the cost within a project change from one organization to another. These may include the local market for personnel, the back office costs, the local cost of transportation, and so on. Furthermore, project managers must go beyond expenditures and look at economic or opportunity costs as well. Despite their best effort, the cost to an organization may depend on a host of factors beyond the control of the organization. A change in legislation may increase the burden of HIPAA legislation, and this in turn increases the true cost of operating the electronic health record system. It is no surprise that some project managers may not be able to estimate the cost of a project. An important factor in cost overruns is changes in the scope of projects. One may start with an electronic health record for the hospital, but after several years of working on implementing the system, the hospital may decide to move to physician order entry, which significantly changes the systems that should be implemented and the cost of the operations. Changes in scope are an important source of cost overruns.